Alexander the Great had turned a crisis into victory in war. There is a famous anecdote in which, in one battle, Alexander's army faced ten times more enemies to the frightened soldiers and shouted, Alexander came up. God gave me a revelation. If I land on heads when I flip this coin, we will win the war. If I land on tails when I flip this coin, we will lose the war. As Alexander the Great flipped the coin, all the soldiers watched holding their breath. The outcome was heads. Then, the morale of the soldiers who were certain of victory heated up, and they eventually won a great victory. Celebrating victory, one general said this victory was made by heaven's luck. Alexander the Great responded, Both sides of the coin were heads, either before or after the coin flip. Nothing has changed with regard to the war, but only one thing, that the soldiers' belief in victory had changed positively. Robert K. Merton, a professor of social psychology at Harvard University, in his book named Social Theory and Social Structure, has introduced an amazing theory of the self-fulfilling prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy is a process in which a person or group's belief or expectation, whether it is right or wrong, affects a situation or an individual or group's behavioral outcome. Simply put, if you think it's going to happen, then it's going to happen. Dr. Merton gave an example. If a woman believes that her marriage will fail and is worried that it will actually happen, then her beliefs will make her marriage fail. Examples like this happen often in our daily lives. What is often called a placebo effect is also an example of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Prejudice we form when we meet people is another good example. That person is a good person. That person has an insidious side, not someone to be close to. These prejudices affect how we behave. If we believe they are a good person, we treat them kindly. If we believe they are an insidious person, we treat them unkindly or totally avoid them. Then the person will also treat us the same. In the end, we think we are right. But it is not your expectation that is right. It is your belief that made the phenomenon. A person who needs to be especially careful of these self-fulfilling prophecies is a leader. If a leader leads an organization with prejudice, then the results will eventually align with that prejudice. If a leader keeps a person he likes and gives opportunities to him or her only, he or she will swear loyalty to the leader and act in the leader's favor. But. What about the person that the leader disliked from the beginning? Every little thing will get on the leader's nerves. Perhaps a person who is actually outstanding won't even get a chance to show his or her ability. In the end, in order for organizations or companies, yourself and your members to achieve positive results, the leader's positive self-fulfilling prophecy must come first. You reap what you sow. In other words, if we want to achieve positive results, we need to first think of ourselves and others positively. In personal relationships, you get what you give. If you have positive expectations for others, then they will also treat you positively. On the contrary, if you have negative expectations for others, then they will also treat you negatively. 
This is the same in the case of pursuing interests. If we only think of our own interests, then others will also only think of their own interests. The greatest value of a company or organization is trust from its customers and members. According to the self-fulfilling prophecy, if we want to be trusted by others, we need to first trust others. If you dream of network marketing that grows with trust, then you shall not forget you reap what you sow.